We are in the middle of nowhere, Winlaw, British Columbia. We're off grid with two F-150 Lightnings. One of the cool things is the versatility that not everybody thinks about when they're considering an electric truck. And we're going to show you one today because it's pretty freaking cool. There's artwork and there's artwork. You can pull out a paintbrush. You can pull out some clay. But this takes a little bit more. And having a massive generator can make one heck of a difference. I'm here with Peter Vogelar, who's an amazing metal artist. He does work all over the place, but his HQ is right here. And he can do that work because of his F-150 Lightning. He doesn't have to cart around all of that crazy crap, have a trailer on the back to power everything or have a generator because he's driving one. Peter, welcome to Truck Up EVs, man. Good morning, Simon. <laughs> How's it going? Excellent. Uh, so just a couple things. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Like you're not like out there with a little paintbrush and, you know, and doing the mountain scenes. No. You do something quite okay, special. Well, I, I've been sculpting for many years. In fact, it started with snow sculpture 30 years ago. Oh, wow. And I've managed to get around the world with that and then 20 years ago, I started sand sculpting, won a couple of world championships with my buddy, David. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then Castle Gar started their sculpture walk. I started getting encouraged to make permanent sculptures, you know, instead of things that melt and flow away. <laughs> and, and I've done a series over the years. I've done concrete pieces there. I've done mosaic pieces. But during COVID, I suddenly had more time. As we all did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all my traveling events got canceled and I, um, I started doing these welded pieces and it just, I had, a, I had a brainwave about using sand sculpture as a starting point. Oh, okay. So I carved these out of sand and then I make a mold and I can lay my metal bits, which I get for free from metal shops. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Th these are the Tim bits from... From, <laughs> and, from the welding shop. Yeah. And so I've got buckets of these round knockouts that I can create all these forms. And afterwards, people go, how the heck did you do that? I know, I can't believe it. I look at your work uh, and it's absolutely stunning. I've Thank never you. seen anything like it actually. Okay, well that's it. I, I think I've hit a niche. I think I'm, you have. Where I'm, I'm onto something that's very unique and captivating. And in the last few years, I've won a number of uh, People's Choice Awards, which means that the sculptures get purchased. Yes. So I'm happy about that. So now you got a business going. Yeah. And you've also got another side to it because you're doing it in another unique way, not just with the sand well, and with the, yeah. and not with the punch outs, but actually the way that you do it. Okay. And that's with this darn thing. I so, can use my truck as my source for my 220 welder. And it's amazing how much welding you can do and hardly affect the battery at all. Really? Yeah. So, and you don't have to do all these special different kind of plugs. It's a plug and play. Like the 220 that you got coming right off your arc welder unit works on this plug, correct? I, had to, I made a nice, cord okay yeah right so, but the plug itself and yeah, off you go that's it wow that's amazing yeah and tell me a little bit about this you'd had a job recently in a place called salmo which is also in the middle of bloody nowhere yeah. you went out there and did a major job well, my tell me friend, about that. it was, it was kind of neat because my friends live on this acreage and yeah. they have this beautiful garden but there's nowhere no power nearby right and he goes you know, is there any way you can weld us up a pergola? And, and be, because both of us have quite a collection of old steel, um, we just said, let's just wing it. And I was able to take a load over from Winlod of Salmo, and he, right. he scrounged up. Scrounged up his wrecker specials oh, supply. Oh, my. He had, he had um, <laughs> logging choker chains. He had... Everything. Uh, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I just combined all of this and stuff. went at it yeah for four days i welded four days yes uh, so you had to multiple charge your trucks through that no right? no 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 I, the truck i tell you what after four, four days four days how many hours a day i think well of actual weld it's hard to know i mean the, i had it running the welder was the, running it all was the time. running all the time so but i wasn't what, welding all the time but still but, okay but i also but, was running my grinders my, my buffers all this stuff the cutting all the steel. of it all that stuff for four days yeah. off a single charge. Yeah. So did you were you able to drive so what, out? You know, it went down seventy clicks in range. Okay, so for my American yeah. friends, you're talking seventy kilometers. Yeah. So you so lost less than fifty miles. Forty-five miles of range after four days yeah. of running an arc welder, a grinder, and your truck as your basic your office and your workstation yeah. Yeah. for what? Eight hours a day pretty for close. four days. You're pretty close, yeah. That's nuts. It is. Like, right. you just they don't really fathom what you could do until you really get into the meat and potatoes. Yeah, and it. people keep expecting, like, 
Oh, yeah, that's going to just drain Oh, you. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But people don't realize, okay, you're pushing a three-ton block of metal, a, basically a barn, up a hill. Yeah. So you need a lot of electrons to do that. That's right. But you don't need a lot of electrons to run your house. No, you, you don't. don't need a lot of re electrons to run a shop. So when you start to compare, you know, use per use case, you end up realizing that's why these things can power your house for yeah. days. Yeah. Because they don't draw anywhere near what yeah. it takes to push a large object yeah, the other the night the power went out, and and I was ready to plug in the range off the, uh, but I didn't have the right outlet for my for my stove. For your stove. Yeah. Your wife was cooking. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. But so you ruined the chicken, but no, you kept the fridge running. Eh? Yeah, but you kept the fridge running. <laughs> yeah, I did keep the fridge running because I wanted to be able to get some food out. And she she was saying you can't open the door, and I said, right. Hey, we're just going to run the fridge off the truck. Don't worry. That's right. Yeah. In power outages, it's great, even if you don't have all that money spent on that reverse system, right. actually doing the power st uh, station off uh -huh. of your house. But even if you don't have that, if you don't mind a whole crap pile of electrical cords running in your house, yeah. you can run everything anyway That's right. for, for days. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So let's actually get the frick into it because I want to do some sculpting, okay. man. Okay. So let's set these babies up yeah. and let's start making some art, dude. Okay. Okay, so what's up? Well, right now it's just making power to the inside of the truck. Right. So if I hit this yes button, it right. should allow me to do that. There we go. And there you're live. And then yeah. is there another button that's basically turning everything off? Because Ford's got this one button that turns everything off after 30 minutes. So you I, don't leave your truck running forever and ever on. Man. I, I canceled that. You've right? already got that disengaged. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're good to go. Power. This is one that I started a while ago and I've just got to do some touching up on. See, so he's got a few pieces missing and I'm gonna use a magnet to position the, the pins I wanna get in there. Oh, I see, he's got a couple, he's, he's, he's got too big of a nostril. Yeah, and I figured out how to use magnets to do it, to get the things where I want. Oh yeah, you can tell some men just never grow up. <laughs> Take a look at that arc welding helmet. So just to be clear, yeah. you can't really do arc welding without having a helmet <laughs> like this, I want one. Yeah, I want one that looks like a Ninja Turtle. So basically what you've done with your arc welder here, is you've ground it out. You basically got your one attached to the piece. Ladies and gentlemen, this is being done by a professional. Shortly it won't be. And you're using magnets to get your position. Yeah. In. So you can do exactly what you want to create the, the, the feel of the facial features. That's right. Using your magnets to perfectly align things. Okay. And I can- But you first molded this in a sand mold. Yeah. Brilliant. Or, or actually a plaster mold. That a was plaster came, mold. I came off the sand, yeah. Okay, I see I got a loose piece. I'm going to have to weld first. Sometimes it's like a jigsaw puzzle. I'm just trying to find the right piece to fit in the, the gap. And exactly. And then using the magnet there, you can see that I, I can, how you're just holding everything. They can be very, very delicate, but the magnet does the trick. Yeah. And you can see I've got a few pieces here that are that are loose. I must yes, have... you got some, so you need to weld that yeah, in. That's right. To make sure that doesn't break away later because most of your sculptures end up outside. That's right. Right now, I'm just gonna, I gotta modify one of these pieces to fit. So I'm gonna oh. hook up the grinder. Yeah, cause I got three more 110, 110 outlets I can use, right? Oh, right, while you're running the 220. Yeah. So basically you got a whole bunch of these little bits you got all the big ones and all the little ones, you don't have the size you need. That's right. So so you're some, gonna, but it's just, it, if I just take a corner off one of these, it'll work. And of course, you're gonna do this with all the proper safety gear. You, oh yeah, You're yeah. gonna meet all the requirements and standards that were written on the packaging for your grinding Just machine. a second, so number one, there's- Oh, well, at least you use gloves. That's a step yeah. in the right direction. And look at this now. Oh my oh, goodness. Okay. Sure helps with having to set up the whole workbench for half an hour. I think I'm making progress. Okay, let's take a look. Oh my God, look at that. Holy smokes. Oh, it's got a nostril. Yeah. Nice nostril. And it wow, fixes, fixed his nose a little bit more too, yeah. That's amazing. But I think it's time to let me show you how this is done. Okay. I happened to uh, to go to art school. I, I failed, but you know, this looks so easy to me. I can do this stuff in my sleep. Walk in the park. I think there's awards coming my way. Easy peasy. Well, first of all, we've got to think about art here, folks. I can't see a thing. Oh, that's a beautiful piece of art. Yeah. Michelangelo, eat your heart out. 
I can't believe how talented I am. It's starting to look like a flower. You know, I think I found a new calling. Yeah. I think I got something here. I mean, this is, this is a work of freaking art. I'm auctioning this baby. What is that? Simon, what are you up to? So basically, you know, you see, you can, you can rest it, you know, in a field or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's a tripod. What did you uh, think it was? It, it, uh, oh my God. Oh, you're disgusting. Huh. Hold on a second. Do you smell something burning? What the, what the heck is, what am I talking? Thanks, thanks for putting me out, man. No, I really appreciate it. I, I don't usually carry a fire extinguisher. I think I'm onto something here. And I, I, what I'd like to do is I know you have some exhibits and I thought that maybe we could do like a, a duo, like a team and, and we could put them side by side. And you know, I think we could probably, uh, you know, you could help me along because of your established uh, clientele. But I, I think that, you know. Yeah, I don't know about that, Simon. All right, well. Okay, I think we're on par. Yeah, I'd give you a couple more weeks. Oh, okay. I wanna go, uh, I'm gonna try to sell this. Okay. Okay. Please join me in supporting Peter. Like all renowned artists, they make a lot less dedicating their lives to their passion than most people think. And he doesn't always toot his own horn. So I'm gonna toot it for him. Peter Vogelar has taken part in projects all over the world. Combined with his snow and ice jobs and contests, he has sculpted in 19 countries. Add to that that his team were Olympic champions, having won first in People's Choice at the Torino Olympics in Italy in 2006. On top of that, he was one of the best sand sculptors who came together on the TV hit Race Against the Tide, competing in season two. But most importantly, his latest piece is vying for people's choice at the Sculptor Walk, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is the largest annual exhibit of public sculptures in the world. You'll find the link to vote in the Sculptor Walk in the description below, so please take a moment to give his work a check mark. His piece is number 54 out of 80 exhibits. If you like Peter's work and you wish to contact him, you can do so via his website below as well in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and click that bell notification icon to help my little channel grow. Once again, thanks for watching.